How long do digital pianos last? Technology today has us constantly getting new phones, new televisions, new computers, and we have customers ask us all the time, well, how long is this digital piano going to last? Let's find out. Hi, Patrick Marr with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We really appreciate your support and we love to interact with you guys. Well, today we have an interesting topic. It's one that, it's a question that we get pretty frequently actually. Um, and I think it's because our brains are trained when we're buying something that plugs in um, or something that has technology in it, we are me immediately thinking of the lifespan. Um, it's something, it's, it's a, I would say it's a new phenomenon because only in the last 25 years have we really been trained to, to see this giant technology, like the, the innovation of technology take giant steps every six months to a year where we're, we're expecting a new iPhone to come out or expecting a new laptop to come out, a new television. Some, something new is coming and we know it. We can expect it in six months to a year. And so when we're looking at things like a digital instrument that plugs into the wall, our mind goes right to, well, when does this become obsolete? Or when, when is this going to break on me? Or what, you know, there's, there's concern. And I think it's, it's a well-represented uh, concern. I think it's, it's very valid to have that. Um, and so I think it's interesting to look at the history of digital pianos and of, of course, of acoustic pianos. Um, a lot of us grew up with a piano in the house or a digital instrument in the house. Um, and then generations before us grew up with everyone having an acoustic piano in the house and getting passed down from generation to generation. And these acoustic instruments, all you have to do is go onto Craigslist or go onto Facebook Marketplace, go into a local piano store, and you'll see instruments that are 100 years old, 80 years old, 50 years old, that play, and sometimes they sound incredible and they look beautiful. They were crafted with, with care and they were maintained, they were well maintained for a long time. Um, and then you see that they're priced at a certain price range and around that price range, you start finding really good digital instruments. So whether you're looking at a digital keyboard or if you're looking at something like the Yamaha Clavinova line, which I have behind me, or the CA series from Kawhi, or Roland has a nice digital piano uh, assortment as well. When you start looking at those, they, they are in the price range of more modern used pianos. Um, and you can spend a lot of money on these instruments. And so you start asking, well, how long is this going to last? And if you look at it strictly from a warranty standpoint, a lot of these manufacturers are going to say, well, we, we back it for five years. We say everything's going to be good on it for five years. Um, but does that mean that it's only going to last five years? I don't think so. Um, but we do also want to mention that it's important how you care for this instrument. Um, and of course, if you're spending a lot of money on this, you're not going to throw it in the garage and forget about it. Um, it's going to usually be in a living room or in a music studio or in a school district. Um, and I think it's important to realize that if you want the longest lifespan for a digital piano, it's important to know how to maintain it. Um, and so just the the lifespan that we're talking about in this video um, is is something that's been cared after. Of course, dust is going to get on these instruments. Of course, you might be moving and you'll have to pick up the instrument and movers who aren't experienced will pick it up and throw it in a truck, make sure it's tied down right um, and move these instruments. And those things are fine. These are built to be sturdy enough to be picked up by two untrained individuals and move around. They're lightweight. They're under 200 pounds. They're usually in the 140s. Um, when it comes to picking up and moving around. Um, and they're also built for kids to bang on. You know, it's not the purpose of it, but they are, they've maintained a lot of stress tests in these and they don't want these things to fall apart on you. They, they don't, they give you five years and it's funny, we rarely, rarely, rarely see any of them come in and get warranty repaired. Um, these instruments are incredibly built. Um, they put a lot of research, a lot of time and effort into making a quality instrument that they stand behind. Not, I'm talking about they as the manufacturers, but you really go down the list. And if you're looking at a quality instrument, Yamaha, Kawhi, Roland, um, some of these bigger names, you really are getting a quality instrument. And that's why they have stuck around for so long. Um, so you think about the Clavinova line. Um, I'll, I'll use Clavinova as an example because it's not only behind me, but because it is kind of what people think of when they think of digital instruments. Yamaha, of course, 
who was very famous for making the DX1 and the DX7 back in the 80s as one of those first digital instruments that was a piano. Um, those have gained novelty over the years and they're really kind of collector's pieces at this point. But when you think about those first Clavinovas, it was the purpose of bringing something that was not only affordable and easy to maintain, but something that a piano, a, a learning piano student or an experienced pianist can have as an alternative to an acoustic instrument. And what's incredible is we see some of those Clavinovas still come in today to our store and they're, they're 30 years old, they're 25 years old, they're 20 years old, and they still play, they still, they still plug in, they still sound cool. I won't say they sound as good as the new ones because they definitely don't. There's been huge technology advancements, as we've talked about, of not only polyphony and being able to handle samples better, but the sampling technology itself and the modeling technology has progressed to such a level where you almost feel like you're at an acoustic piano now when you're sitting in front of a clavinova. Not only does the feel feel incredibly different than the original digital pianos, but the sound is second to, I mean, there's nothing until the next generation of things comes out and there's these huge technology advancements. Um, but what we do see these instruments come in for and some of the common things that we do see in diagnosis, um, contact errors. So over the years, a lot. Of, if you have someone who is classically trained or who practices every day for multiple hours and they're doing their scales and they're doing their hand exercises, these sensors will wear out over time. I mean, it's a, it's a piece of technology. Um, I, I would say the majority of these instruments don't usually have that happen for at least 10 to 15 years, um, if not longer. Um, sometimes there's, there's uh, issues if, uh, if people have spilled things on, uh, on the instrument, of course, if there's been any uh, liquid or if it's been exposed to um, conditions of the outside, you know, humidity has, has uh affected it or if it's been in a very dry place or exposed to a lot of heat that's when you start seeing these issues happen quicker um, but again these are built to last and they're built so that there aren't the same issues that kind of happen with an acoustic instrument where you, uh, an acoustic instrument is a lot more um, susceptible to damage when it comes to the outside world these digital pianos are really kind of built to for a choir director to be able to pick up and move to another room and not have to worry about our kids practicing on it and uh, it's, it's, it's neat because that's one side of it, but they're also trying to make it an, as acoustic as possible. Um, and so maintaining it, again, very important. But not only that, uh, over the years when the technology advance, advances, it's really cool to compare some of these older models um, to the newer ones. So if you maybe have a digital piano that's 20 years old that someone gave you, um, it might be a good starting point for your kid because it was free or it didn't cost a lot. But it's interesting to get with a piano teacher and see where the student is progressing or where you are as, a, as, as an experienced piano player, how that feels and sounds, and then trying something new and seeing, is this, is this transition worth it? Do, have, I been for, you know, have I been on my iPhone 2 for too long? And do I want to look at what the new iPhone does? It's kind of, it's kind of bad because it's so eye-opening to hear new samples and to hear about the new technology, like the Bluetooth capability, um, and also to hear the new sound systems on these. It's incredible to, to hook up your phone to a very nice 100 watt system, 50 watts aside, and have that in your living room and say, hey, let's just put on some music real quick. It operates as like a big sound bar. It's, it's really a lot of fun. It makes it more interactive for kids. They're able to pull up YouTube videos and play it through the system. Um, and then there's just technology with learning and writing and recording that has never been this good. So the actual piano playing becomes not secondary, but it becomes a necessary thing that, hey, it, has, it feels great, it sounds great, but what are those extra features that are gonna maybe draw a student into it a little bit more? Are they gonna be able to play drums on it and write a whole song and score their music? Um, the, a lot of the technology we see today has uh, really fun features in it that are really thinking of the players and who is this for? Um, and a lot of market analysis of, hey, let's build a better product for our customer base who love this instrument and who have loved it for years. Um, so just, it's, it's, it's a hard qu question to answer, and I think that's why people ask. Um, because from a, st a strict, is this going to work for me in 10 years? The answer is yes. Um, if you don't have, if you keep it in the right conditions and you don't damage the instrument in any way, um, uh, it would, it's not going to break down on you. So a lot of these manufacturers, that five-year warranty covers everything. 
Um, but we don't see issues with these unless it's, again, with someone who's playing it every single day, multiple, multiple hours on it. And then at that point, it's pretty easy fixes. And what's nice is these companies aren't going anywhere. Yamaha's not going anywhere. Kawhi's not going anywhere. Um, Roland isn't going anywhere. And they still support these instruments through uh, for a very long time. We're able to get some of the parts for those. Uh, they're almost vintage now. Those older Clavinovas from Yamaha. Um, some of the real old ones, it's harder now. Um, but they've supported it for over the right amount of time in our eyes. Um, you can get parts for 15, 20 year old instruments um, and still be able to get it repaired pretty easily. Um, and with the, the modern age and finding uh, different schematics online, a, a trained technician can really go in and diagnose what's wrong pretty easily um, and find a lot of stores can find replacement parts and find things that keep this instrument alive. So if you love your instrument, if you love the technology, that floppy drive technology on it, and you're like, I have so many floppies, um, not only do they support that technology, but they have uh, ways to bridge that technology into the modern age. So they sell floppy drives that plug into these newer units so that you can still love the things that you had before, and they have conversion um, to MIDI files that can get onto the new instruments. And so I think it's important to realize, what do you need the instrument for? And what is the lifespan that, that the, what are you willing to commit to as a musician or maybe as your student? Um, because you can find the right instrument that will last that lifetime. Um, I think today, any, any instrument that you pick out, um, if you pick it out with the right mindset of this is what I'm trying to accomplish, you can find the right one and it will last you as long as you want it to um, until you say, hey, that new piece of technology, I want to I want to try that. I want to go compare it to mine. Um, and I really think it's neat that these manufacturers are building products that aren't going to break down you, break down on you, or slow down over time. Um, so just really neat. Um, if you guys have any questions, please reach out to us. Uh, it's it's definitely a case by case basis when it comes to these manufacturers. I'd be weary to, to spend a lot of money with some of the newer techno or the newer uh, newer companies. I would say um, there's a lot of confusion when it comes to MIDI controllers versus an actual digital piano. Um, but we've done some videos on what to look for with digi when, in, when you're buying a digital piano. Um, make sure you check out that video and other videos that we do have. We're Alamo Music Center. Please subscribe to our channels. Check out our other videos. You can find us again online at alamomusic.com. We have a chat agent available who can help you guys out with any questions. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Patrick Marr. If you have any questions, again, please leave them as comments or reach out to us, and we'd love to help you guys out. Thanks for watching.